All right, so we have determined that our recap and our power regulator installation is good to go. Our NES works, our pin connectors are good. Uh, we get good connection with our cartridges and this NES works great. So now we wanna move on to board prep for our actual NES RGB mod. Uh, and I usually start that out by removing the PPU. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we have our NES motherboard. Uh, we can see this is a CPU 07 revision, and our uh, picture processing unit is uh, right here on our board. You can see here at U5, it says PPU. Uh, and I believe this is our CPU over here. You can see where it says that at U6. That's actually one of the things I really like about the uh, NES uh, motherboards. They kind of have everything really nicely labeled for us on here. So uh, we need to pull this entire picture processing unit. Now, the very first time I ever did one of these, I ran into some issues. Um, there is a really big uh, plane here that kind of acts as a heat sink that we need to make sure uh, that we get right. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually reflow all the pins on our PPU right here. Okay, let's start out by adding some flux to our board. And I need to turn on my soldering station here. Get my trusty Kester leaded solder here, which I always love to use. Okay, and turn on my solder vacuum here. Now let's go ahead and reflow these. The solder is getting vacuumed up anyway. All right, there we go. There's one side. here. We'll come back with a little more flux and then everything should go where it needs to. All right, there we go. Looking good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the camera back out and we will get ready to remove all that solder. Okay, so the way that I usually check this um, is I'm very gently using my pliers. I just wiggle those feet a little bit. That way, if there's any little bit of solder left, it'll sort of break off. But what you don't want to do is grab these and hammer them and, and yank traces out and everything. You do need to be uh, somewhat delicate with it. That's good. Good. Okay, so that one needs to be hit again. And again, not pressing real hard. Free, not free. I think these two right here. Yeah, some of those on that top row towards the end didn't quite get free when I was working on them. And actually just sort of visually inspecting these, I can see a couple of it. And again, no, no reason to press down real hard on these. The biggest mistake you can make is just like really cramming down with your soldering iron. You just want to increase the heat, make sure that it spreads evenly uh, across this area, really gets in there and gets everything molten. And if it doesn't, no big deal. Hit it with your vacuum again or even use some uh, desoldering grain. All right, all of that feels like it should be should be free. Um, and I think I've got a uh, an IC extractor that I can use to pull that out there. Let's see if this one will do the job. Might not be quite long enough. No, that'll do it. There we go. So you can see it pulls straight up. You don't have to worry about bending any pins that way. Popped right out. Yeah, that's a Jonard Tools EX2 IC extractor. I, this thing is actually coming really handy for me. So there we go. We have a nice, clean extraction of our NES PPU unit. 
Awesome. All right, moving on. Uh, but here we have uh, our kit for a standard front loader. And again, this is the piece uh, we need for our front loader. And it is going to go in the position where our PPU just was. All right, so with this piece, uh, I always like to try to keep things consistent. It doesn't actually matter which way you put these in here, but uh, just to keep everything consistent, you can see in the silk screen, it's got a notch here. Uh, so I like to make sure that that lines up right there as well. Uh, and this is the riser that uh, we're going to use um, to put our pin headers uh, into the NES RGB board here in the not too distant future. And uh, that fits pretty snug. So let's just go ahead and get that welded in right now. We're just going to hit one pin in the corner first. And then let us determine that we have pushed our, uh, make sure that we are pushed all the way in tight, which we are. Now let's go ahead and solder this all the rest of the way in. And I have my uh, soldering iron set to about 350C. One side. Whoop. Yep, good connections. Interesting, you can sort of see this area where we had that stubborn ground plane that a lot of people have trouble getting those pins out. Uh, that didn't quite connect through there all the way the way that I like, so I'm gonna hit uh, these few pins down here on the end again. Just a little bit better. Again, those are, those connections would actually be fine, but I just like to be extra firm. All right, making good progress. Now the other side. Bit of solder that locked on there. Okay, there's a bunch of flux on that board. So let's go ahead and clean up our work a little bit. I don't want to leave a bunch of extra flux on that board. So if I use it non corrosive, but I still like to keep it all as clean as possible. I you could say I like to clean my new paint flux. And that is what our mount looks like when it's welded in. Now at this point, especially if you're new uh, to this, not a bad idea to test continuity um, between your pins on the other side and your socket on this side here. Really easy to do, I'll demonstrate that quickly. So we want our multimeter and set it to continuity mode, like so. Make sure that it's gonna beep. Test one side here and check it there. And we see that we have good continuity. Down here, these ones that tend to be a little trickier. Yep, we see that we're good to go there. So our socket looks good. So pin headers in first. I'm hoping that uh, we didn't uh, wiggle these around too much. The soldering. Actually, that's so close. Having a pair of pliers at the back kind of helps. That's definitely a little bit of a downside of uh, having to desolder them is uh, some of them aren't exactly perfectly lined up the way they were. So it might take a little doing getting these to go back in the way we want. So 
especially trying to do it without flexing the whole the whole motherboard. You know what? I think I'm just going to go do that off camera because it'll be easier for me to do it off the bench, just kind of in my lap or whatever. Okay, our pin headers are back in place. Um, this back one really, really helps to have a pair of pliers or something to uh, navigate around that bit there. Um, but yeah, so you can see our pin headers are back in and ready to line things back up. So our pin headers need to go on these inside rows here. There we go. I'm gonna make, actually, I'm gonna triple check. I think that's how I did it last time. Let's see here. Yeah, we want them on the outside. So we wanna go all the way back. She looks like one of my pins. A little bit out of sorts right there. Yeah, there's a couple couple of pins that seem like they're a little out of sorts after having all that heat put on them. It's okay, we'll just figure it out as we go. But yeah, this is a good, good example of why you always want to measure twice and cut once. First time I've ever done that on one of these. Well, this looks like another one where it's going to be easier for me to just do it uh, sort of off camera, uh, sort of over my lap, so I'm going to do that. All right, there we go. We are seated back in and ready to weld in place again. So let's do that now. There's one row. All right, making progress now. Our pin headers are back in and actually in the correct position this time. Let's go ahead and clean up that flux. Okay, it looks like I got bit of solder down in a couple of those vias. Let's go ahead and get that out. All good. Actually, there's one leg that didn't quite get well. Right, let's do that. All right, making progress. Okay, let's get this PPU put back in. All right, it's pretty much the same principle as before. Yeah, we're gonna tack one leg in, adjust it as needed, and go from there. Okay, and that's actually pretty good. I like to get it nice and flush. Yeah, actually I like that just fine. Let's go ahead and tack down the other corner and get going. Yep, everything still looks good. A little more flux. Good welds. Sure, those connections are real good. All 
All right, no bridges. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and clean our board up again. We can finally get this show on the road. I think for this one, I'm going to get the uh, toothbrush in there. All oh, right, there we go. One more pass. I don't like when the uh, solder mask starts coming off the PCB. Sometimes that gets real sticky. And I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to try to hit it again, just get as much of that cleaned up as possible. All right, good solid welds. Maybe use a little more solder than I needed to there, but that's okay. Nothing's bridged, not worried about that. Uh, so, you know, while I'm in here, um, I know that uh, the way that HAP wants me to set this up uh, is, is that we can use uh, all of the RGB palettes plus uh, composite. So we actually want to have all of our pads here tinned and ready to go for wires. Go. Next, we will look at our connections here, which is for all of our video, uh, as well as our jumper set. All right, so looking at uh, our install instructions here, uh, we are currently at the stage here where we have our, our board ready, the PPU is installed. And uh, it says here, if you have an NTSC version, which we do, um, you should solder jumper J5. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, jumper J5 is right here. So this one, we want to put a daub of solder on there and make sure that that is bridged. There we go. All right, our jumper is now bridged. All right, let's talk about video. Uh, so, this row of pads here controls all of the video uh, on the board uh, as well as our audio. It's where we feed, uh, basically we're gonna feed our connectors from. And uh, after talking with Hap about this, uh, we decided that being able to uh, have options is gonna be best for him. Uh, so for this board, we can enable RGB, we can enable S-Video, and we can also run composite. Now, the connector that uh, I have opted to go for is this really cool connector here from Laser Bear Industries. I'm actually gonna crack that open and we'll take a closer look at it. But basically, this is a SNES style multi-out, which I think fits in the NES perfectly. Uh, it's how I've done them in the past. And, uh, you know, the nice thing is if you already have uh, an RGB SNES, uh, you can use the same cable if you want. Uh, I like to just keep that stuff consistent. So I have basically all of my uh, Nintendo stuff set up to use the same cabling. Uh, my uh, GC Duel up there can use it. Uh, my Super Nintendo, my uh, RGB, uh, NES, all use that. All right, so here is our Snap Fit connector. This is really cool. Um, I've used different ones in the past. This is actually my first time using one of these Laser Bear. Uh, kits, but looks really cool. So let's go ahead and pull this off and we will look at our board. Screwdriver out. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull, pull our screw there. Set that aside and slide out our PCB. It's actually in there really snug. It's, it's nice. I actually kind of have to push it from the front to get it out of there. So this is our SNES style multi out. And we will be running all of our cabling from here to here. Now in the past, I've used uh, multi-outs that look like this. And these are actually great. I really, really like them. The nice thing about these is you can actually slide them uh, all the way under uh, the RF module inside the Nintendo uh, and get a really nice clean look uh, in the back. And actually, I'll show you a picture of what my uh, recent one looked like where I did that. All right, and you can see here uh, on the uh, the back of the Nintendo looks really, really good. The only issue with placing it there and using that particular mount, as you can see uh, from the image there, is uh, the two sizable screws uh, that you use to secure it in place. Now there's other methods you could do. I actually prefer uh, to use the screws if I do it that way, uh, just because I know that that is a solid, solid fit. But uh, this new 
uh, piece from Laser Bear uh, here gets us around uh, having to have that, uh, you know, having those screws up, uh, popping out the back. Now, the, uh, the downside with that is it is uh, not going to fit uh, under that unit, at least not without a, a bunch of modification, uh, which I don't really want to do for this. So, you know, that's kind of the, you know, what the two different options uh, look like. So, as you can see here, uh, the PCB that comes with the Laser Bear uh, kit is not labeled, uh, unlike this one. It's actually one of the things that I really like about this is it's labeled and I don't have to reference anything, uh, but they, they do have it labeled uh, over on the Laser Bear website. And you can see here on the Laser Bear Industries website uh, that it is very clearly labeled and uh, the, the lines there correspond with the exact same lines uh, on our RGB uh, PCB here. All right, so let's go ahead and look at uh, our board and the corresponding video lines. So uh, you can see we have a bunch here. And, uh, and you can also see on the Laser Bear website uh, that all of those correspond with a specific spot uh, on this PCB. So uh, down here in the corner, we have our red, uh, we have our green, uh, blue. Uh, here we have our, um, our composite signal. Now, this is actually kind of interesting. So if you look at the, the NES RGB PCB, we have a composite signal that corresponds with that right here in this position. But next to it, we have PPUV. Now, the PPUV is actually uh, a composite signal that is generated natively uh, on the PPU and does not run uh, through the RGB pallets down here. So if you use the PPUV, you're basically going to get uh, standard uh, or as close to standard encoded um, uh, composite color uh, off of the, the PPU. If you use uh, the, the CS pound here, which is uh, you know our composite signal, uh, if you use that one, it will use the, the same color values uh, in the RGB uh, palettes here. Now, uh, the way that I actually kind of like to do these, or at least the last one that I did, uh, that customer opted to go with uh, PPUV. So when he switches it to that, you're getting just standard old school NES colors. And so uh, that is what we are going to do uh, with this one here today. Before we get too far in, the other thing I wanted to actually talk about is uh, our palette switch. Now, a lot of people like uh, to use uh, small slide switches uh, and you can get uh, three position switches where you get to use like two pallets, composite or, or however you want to do it. Um, some people will hardwire these, you know, so you don't even mess with anything. You just pick a palette that you like and use that. But, you know, I discovered that I really like uh, these kind of old school rotary knobs. The thing I like about it is it's kind of like turning the channels uh, on your TV, right? So the thing that I really like about these is you basically will have palette one, palette two, palette three, and then your composite sink. Um, you know, and I just think that's really cool. You literally change a channel uh, on the back of your uh, NES RGB, and uh, that is how you switch palettes. So uh, spoke with Hap, that's how he wanted to do it. So we will be uh, wiring this up and I will be going over that. That will be uh, uh, wired to these pads here. I look on the back, it looks kind of complicated, but it's, it's really not so bad. Uh, I usually use single pole switches. This one just happens to be a double. Uh, so we will only be using uh, one portion uh, of our switchboard here. Uh, we'll be ignoring these other ones. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's usually uh, what I use for pallet switch for these, just my own preference. Uh, I usually put a guitar knob uh, on the, the, the end of this. Um, so it just, I don't know, looks kind of cool. All right, let's go ahead and tin our pads on our board here. And we are going to be using most of them, the flux. All right, so here is our five volts. Here we have ground. This is our PPU composite video. We're gonna leave um, our pallet composite video blank. Our red, green, blue, V, Y, C, now that is our S video. Another ground. And here we have our left and right audio, even though our NES is mono. Uh, there are mods you can do. Um, this board lets you uh, uh, 
pan uh, thing. People kind of fake it. Uh, I haven't actually done one of those yet. Uh, I think that'll be something fun to do in the future, but we do have a left and right audio output here. And then O is our mono audio input, if I remember right. Maybe, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, a and B is our uh, left and right audio uh, input, if I remember right. And I think O is our mono audio out. I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, let's talk about that wiring now. Uh, yeah, so it is uh, pin one and two is our left and right audio uh, for A and B there. And then our audio uh, out is um, the O uh, point all the way down at the end of the board. That is our mono audio out. Uh, and this actually gives us, gives us an opportunity to talk about the second uh, voltage regulator uh, that comes with this board, uh, you know, since we're pushing a little more juice. Okay, here we have a picture of uh, the last uh, NAS RGB that I did. Uh, and you can see on the right there, resting on top uh, of the RF module, is our uh, extra power board uh, that comes with the unit. Uh, now, the way that I usually like to do these is uh, use a couple of the vias um, as the part that runs out to my power board. And then uh, the additional pads that are on the power board uh, we will uh, wire directly uh, to the uh, legs of the 7805, uh, excuse me, 78SO5 uh, voltage regulator. All right, and we can go ahead and uh, tin, tin these up as well. This is our additional power board. If I can find the end of my solder wire here. There we are. It's our five volt. Then, and our ground pads. All right, so now all of our boards are prepared to wire up. All right, let's start wiring. Uh, I think uh, I will probably use a red for my five volt. That's what I basically always use. Uh, and I have this nice um, uh, silicone coated stranded wire that I use uh, for stuff like this. Now, the very first one of these I did, I actually used solid, uh, solid core wire, but it wasn't 30 gauge. It was like, I don't know, 26 gauge or 28 gauge or something. Uh, and it worked. It, it totally worked. Um, but it meant that all my wiring was kind of rigid and that actually can end up putting undue stress uh, on the board. So if you're going to use um, solid core wire, um, I would suggest, you know, finding something probably in between the like giant, like 26 or 28 gauge stuff I used in teeny tiny Kynar wire. This, because I, I I really feel with stuff like that. I mean, you can use it, but I would personally be afraid uh, of signal interference in the video lines. And um, the whole point of this is that we get, you know, we're trying to get like the best possible analog video we can get uh, out of our NES, right? So I, I like this, I think this is 26. Uh, I don't remember right off the top of my head. You see the 26 or 28 gauge silicone coated wire, and that has done pretty good for me. And uh, I usually cut it to length uh, about like so uh, when I'm working on it, about a foot, uh, more than I really need, but I can always trim that up later. Um, usually the way I like to do it is wire everything up, set the thing down, well before, excuse me, before I actually like hook up my ports and everything, uh, set the thing down inside the, the NES, make sure I've got my length exactly the way I like it, and then trim uh, to size. So we're gonna go ahead and start in on our wire. Let's see, this should tell me the size here. I think it's 26. What happens if we use 28 here? Yeah, definitely uh, trims a little excess we don't want. Let's try a 24, see what happens. Which I think 24 is the sweet spot. So yeah, this looks like it's uh, about 24 gauge uh, stranded wire. I usually strip it, uh, kind of grab the wires and twist them together. And I've got one of my helping hands uh, clips here. Uh, you can see it uh, down in the little video. It doesn't quite make it up uh, here into the video uh, that I used to hold my wire and tin it. Actually, uh, it's got a magnetic base. I hook it right up to my uh, to my stool and my workbench. Works out pretty good that way. All right, there we go. Our wire is tuned. And I can now trim that to a correct length. I usually like to sort of line the thing up with the pad. Uh, to get a better idea of my length, and I can see that I need to trim that up just a bit. Okay, so that is just about right. Let's see if I can pull this camera in just a little bit closer. All right, there we go, that's a little bit closer. And yeah, we can see that our wire is now a good length for that one. And uh, 
I think I'm just gonna basically uh, cut a whole bunch of wires to length. Um, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna do it off camera. Uh, it's not, uh, you've seen me do it for this one. That's how I'm gonna do it for all of them. And uh, once I get those all cut, uh, we'll come back and get them welded onto our board. One other thing I misspoke earlier. So we actually want our uh, CS pad tinned. That is actually our uh, composite sink, I believe. So we want to go ahead and tin that pad as well. Uh, the PPUV is uh, our PPU uh, video. Uh, I just got confused. The, the one that we will not be using uh, is the V uh, pin. That is the, uh, uh, the RGB um, composite video signal. So we won't be using that one. We will be using our uh, composite sync because otherwise we wouldn't be able to sync our, our video. So that is what that is. All right, so here we have all of the, uh, all of the wires we're going to need for our audio, our video, and our power to, all right, let's get it wired up. So usually when I do these, I start by uh, tinning my, my iron just a bit. And then all I have to do is kind of touch the pad, touch the wire, and it goes right where we want it. So first things first, five volts. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful weld. There's like nothing better than that. All right. So uh, red for five volt. I think I'm going to use a black wire for ground here. All right. And that is actually a good length. Again, it's in my iron. Beautiful. All right. For our PPU video, I like to use blue. Sometimes you get a little peak like that. So what I do is clean the tip of my soldering iron off real good. Hit it with just a little bit of flux there. Hold that wire again. There we go. Beautiful weld. Moving on. All right, next up is our composite sink. And I like to use yellow for that. Good length. Flux. All right, I'll try to stop saying beautiful after every single well, promise. Okay, so now we have our red, green, and blue lines. For red, I think it's red. our red line so far so good now my silicone wires here i do not have a green uh so i think i will use i don't know white for that looks like i only used white one other time there's a green all right and blue will be blue All right, so we have our sink, our red, green, and blue all in for our RGB line. So next, uh, we are skipping uh, our composite video, and then we are doing YC, which is our uh, S video. So for that one, I think I'll do black and white. Y. So up C, it's just a little long. I'm going to trim, trim that up just a bit. Looking good. All right. So I actually ran out of black wire, which is what I usually use uh, for ground on this. So uh, ground, the ground that will be running out to my video board will be a yellow. And also, there's no reason um, that you couldn't use the through holes for this. All 
Oh, I forgot to tin my forgot to tin my iron. And you can see how it didn't work nearly as well. All right. There we go. Much better. Now I'm not 100% crazy about that. I'm gonna hit it with a little more flux. Hit it with another drop of salt. It would be fine. Just uh, wait for them all to look consistent. Ooh, this one's gonna be tricky. I can already tell. It just doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. All right, next up we have our pin one and two audio in. So we're gonna leave that for now. And uh, we will do our audio out as a red wire. Oh yeah, need to tune my iron. There we go. So there is our audio and video wiring. That nice clean welds. Nothing bridged. All good to go. Next up is our pallet lines. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get those ready. Line one. Line two. That's why it looked a little ugly there. All right, line three. And for our pallet switch, white will be ground. All right. That looks great. No bridges, nice clean welds. All right, so the next thing I'm probably going to do is actually uh, bundle some of these wires up. Um, I like to put a little heat shrink tubing on there, kind of get them uh, uh, get them sort of connected to each other. Um, that way there's just isn't stuff kind of blowing up all over uh, inside uh, the Nintendo. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna grab some of those now. Okay, let's put a little bit of that heat shrink tubing on there and get it all kind of bundled up. There we go. There's one bit, and I usually just kind of do like a handful, like three, maybe four along the length of wire, uh, just to keep it all in one nice unit. One more of those. All right, and actually, I think I want one more of those. And uh, I, I like to, um, actually, I trim the uh, heat shrink tubing uh, before I get in there and do it, just because I, I really like to use shorter lengths, I've discovered as I've uh, been doing this, because uh, it keeps your, your cable nice and, and flexible. All right, so let's go ahead and trim our ends to length there. All right, so this is actually ready uh, to hook up to our pallet switch. Before I do that, I will probably do the same treatment uh, to our uh, video lines here. Now, the, the, the drawback to that is that um, once you bundle up your lines, since I don't have enough colors to make all of these, you know, completely obviously different, um, the thing that I run into there is um, that uh, I end up having to do some continuity testing down um, at the end of my cable to make sure that I know what is what up here. I mean, you can get around that by just using enough uh, colors uh, of, of wire, um, but I've done it in the past and it's not, it's not a, a big deal uh, to do it that way. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get our video lines run properly. 
I actually decided there's a couple things I want to do uh, before I start putting any heat shrink tubing uh, on this stuff up here. Uh, and that is to actually run our lines for our, for our power board. Uh, and I usually do those so that way it, it's just easier to, to see them, be able to tell where they're going. Uh, is I actually run them through uh, the vias in the top of the board uh, that way. So instead of um, like piggybacking off the same pad, uh, I, I think it just makes it a little bit easier uh, to weld. So let's go ahead and do that first. We'll run our five volt power line there, like so. Drop floats. Here's our power line. Very nice. And this will be our ground line. Looks. And then weld it in place. All right, so now we have our five volt and ground lines for our for our power board. Then we'll go ahead and do the same treatment for the lines uh, that are going to run out for our audio, uh, excuse me, run to the board from our audio chip. We'll do them here as yellow and blue. You know, and it'd be perfectly, actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna just run those off of the, uh, the pads at the back. I don't see a, a particular need uh, to do it uh, the way I'm doing here uh, for the audio board. So let's go ahead and get those guys put in place. The only thing is I'll just have to make sure that those don't get included in my bundle of wires for the, uh, uh, that run out to the uh, multi-out. But it is no big deal to get in there and put those in place as well. Plenty of solder, plenty of flux, steady hand. There we go. All right, so our NES RGB board is now fully prepped uh, and ready to be uh, installed back into the, uh, the motherboard. Let's go ahead and uh, do our heat shrink tubing and prepare our lines for our power board. I think we'll go ahead and hook that up first. You know, it isn't strictly necessary uh, to do this with the heat shrink tubing. I just like uh, to keep everything looking nice and neat in there. Uh, so I like to do that. It's a thing I started doing recently. Um, and I just kind of like the way it looks. So that is why I've been doing that. But it, it does kind of help keep everything organized uh, inside, inside the case. All right, looking good there. Okay, let's go ahead and hook up our power board. So the first one we are going to do is ground, which is going to be our outermost pad here. I'm not 100% happy with that. I have a little peak there, so I'm gonna have a little more flux. There we go, that's better. You know, actually, I'm gonna take that back off there. I wanna put one more piece of heat shrink tubing on that line. Right about there. There we go. I know if heat shrink my fingers too much. All right, so. Let's hook that ground line back up. There we go, there's our ground. Okay, so there we have our power is now hooked up, our pallet switch is ready, and our whole uh, snake of wires back here 
your video, audio, etc. is also ready to go. So I think I'm probably going to call it a night tonight. Um, and uh, next time we will be getting into actually hooking up our, our video board here um, and uh, doing our case mods and stuff and uh, actually getting this thing installed uh, into the uh, NES itself.